podcast that dives into the music and community of improvisational progressive rock band, Umphreys McGee. Each week will feature a rotating schedule of insightful full show recaps, interviews with fellow Umphreys, members of Team UM, as well as other musicians who have been inspired by and or played with the band. This is your place for all the latest news and happenings in the world of Umphreys, helping keep you informed on what's been recently released or where you can catch the next show. I'm your host, Sarah Jahimiak. Thanks for joining me as we dive in. Are you prepared for what comes next? Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me for this week's episode of Dropped Among This Crowd. I hope you're able to check out last week's episode where I chat about what I submitted for my Hall of Fame 2019 votes and why I chose them. I also get into another list of tunes I felt needed a mention, how hard it was to vote for Hall of Fame this year, and my view on voting for that 62-minute Ringo from December 30th, and a whole bunch more. There is a link in the show notes where you can check that out if you'd like to give it a listen. There's also a Nugs playlist that you can check out for the songs I talk about, and you can find that in the show notes as well if you'd like to give it a spin. This week, I am super, 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 super (laughs) excited to bring you guys my conversation with Brendan Bayless. Yes, that's right, folks. I had the extreme pleasure of hanging out with Bayless and talking about a shit ton of topics. Seriously, I'm still grinning from having this opportunity. I'm sure you can tell how hard I'm cheesing right now by the tone of my voice. I asked some serious questions, like what it's been like being home with his three kids all the time now, what he thinks the future of live music might look like. We switch gears and talk about the recent evening with Jake, the upcoming Umphreys wrapped in the round, the recently announced drive-in shows, Why Not, his favorite Star Wars movie, and the Beatles. And Brendan shares some news on the new music the band is working on and so, so, so much more. Guys, you're really gonna fucking love this one. Thank you so much to Bayless for taking the time to talk with me and be a guest on the show. It was such an honor to spend an hour talking with you. Really looking forward to when we can chat again and the next time I get to see your face in person. There is also a video of our chat that you can find on the show's YouTube page. So if you want to check that out, follow the link in the show notes. And while you're there, subscribe to the channel and you'll never miss a new episode when they drop. Do you have a small business that makes shirts, pins, jewelry, sweet prints, or sells other interesting products that you think peeps would like to purchase? Is your band looking to get some attention from fellow music-loving umfreaks? Maybe you provide an awesome service that can make folks' lives better or easier and want some like-minded clientele? Or perhaps you're looking to hire some cool people to work with. Let Dropped Among This Crowd help you get the word out. With interviews on the show and sponsorship packages that include ad time on the podcast, ticket giveaways, social media plugs, product reviews, and so much more, Dropped Among This Crowd can help you reach tons of fellow umfreaks, musicians, and other kind folks looking to purchase from you, work with you, and support their fellow ump family. Email droppedamongthiscrowdpod at gmail.com if you're interested in chatting more. Before we get into this week, I just quickly wanted to let everyone know the show now has its very own Etsy store. Very excited about this. Launched it last week, and there are only a few t-shirts on there right now, but I've got some more shirts and other things in the works, so stay tuned for that. If you have some ideas of styles, items, sizes, or whatever, please feel free to reach out to me and let me know what you like. And if you make amazing things that would look rad with a Dropped Among This Crowd logo on it, let me know. I would absolutely love to work with you. You can find a link to the store in the show notes or by searching Among This Crowd on Etsy. 
Also, in case you missed the extremely exciting news, Umphreys has announced Wrapped in the Round September 2nd and 3rd at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. The stream is $24.99 for one night or $44.99 for both nights and will be available for replay for 10 days following the event. If you're wondering what in the round means, according to the email sent by the band in a production warehouse, they will be eliminating their traditional stage configuration because, I mean, why not? Everything that we're doing now is completely different. So they'll be playing on a round stage with tour gigs helping with a variety of stage views. Keeping the evening even more interesting at the center will be a bowl filled with our ideas each ticket purchased allows you the chance to submit one S2 theme. Throughout the two nights, the guys will pull from the bowl and use the ideas to improvise accordingly. There's no doubt that this is going to be a fan-fucking-tastic two nights. Ben will be there doing lights. Chris will be running the sound. I am so here for this. I am so excited. Boondock was amazing, but I know we could all use a hardcore Umphreys rock show. We just invent, invested in a whole new sound system for the living room, and my husband will have it all set up before this stream, so I'm super excited about that. It's going to be the perfect thing to christen in the new sound system. Tickets went on sale for this last Thursday, August 20th. All the information you need for ticketing bundles, merch info. There is a pin and a screen printed foil print by Baker Prints available for this event. You can also find out how you can snag additional S2 entries and anything else you may need to know for this event by following the link in the show notes. And also recently announced, Umphreys has decided they're going to do a drive-in show. Umphreys McGee at the drive-in September 5th and 6th at Seat Geek Stadium outside Chicago in Bridgeview, Illinois. This happening just a day after the Wrapped in the Round two nights live stream. No doubt making the most of their time together in the same area. Tickets went on sale last Friday the 20th, if you were listening to this when it airs, so I'm pretty sure that it's all sold out at this point, but you will still find links for everything you need for this event, including all of your FAQ answers. We personally do not plan on attending this event for a few reasons, but I'm very, very interested in seeing how this event goes, and you know that Dropped Among This Crowd will be bringing you a full recap. One more quick little announcement for you guys. Also recently announced, the band is postponing all California, Texas, and Oklahoma dates for this year to September 2021. All tickets will be valid for the September 2021 dates and refunds are available via the point of purchase. Before we dive in, I want to share with you an amazing offer exclusively for my listeners from Audible.com. Audible.com allows you to choose from thousands of audiobook titles to download that you can listen to offline anytime, anywhere. The app is free to download and can be installed on all smartphones and tablets. And something I thought was awesome, you can listen across devices without losing your spot. Audible is the leading provider of spoken word entertainment and audiobooks, ranging from bestsellers to celebrity memoirs, news, business, and personal development. Every month, members receive one credit to pick any title from a number of genres and subjects, two Audible originals from a monthly selection, and access to daily news from the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, and the Washington Post, as well as guided meditation programs. Also, if you can't decide what you want to listen to, don't worry. You can keep your monthly credits for up to a year and use them to binge on a whole series later if you'd like. I personally love reading personal development books and biographies about musicians, which I'm sure is not a surprise to hear. 
I've listened to some really great ones using Audible. A few that I loved were The Five Second Rule by Mel Robbins, Girl Wash Your Face by Rachel Hollis, You Are a Badass by Jen Sinchiro, and some incredible biographies like The Dirt, The Motley Crue Story, Gold Dust Woman about Stevie Nicks, and Life by Keith Richards, which was absolutely phenomenal, and I seriously recommend that book to every music fan that I know. No matter what your favorite genre, Audible has something you'll enjoy. Head to audibletrial.com slash dropped among this crowd and you'll receive a 30-day free trial of Audible and a free audiobook of your choice. A perfect way to snag that book you've been meaning to check out. That's audibletrial.com slash D-R-O-P-P-E-D-A-M-O-N-G T-H-I-S-C-R-O-W-D for your free 30-day trial of Audible and free audiobook. All right, everyone. So here is my conversation with Brendan Bayless. Enjoy. Um, upstate, no, what you, what state are you in? New York? Yeah, I'm right outside Buffalo. Right. So, yeah. How is it there? It's... I don't know. It's the same. I don't know. It's just the same shit, different day. I feel like at this point, you know, like it's weird to talk to people because it'd be like, Oh, how you doing? And you're like, we're good today. Yeah. You know? today. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's so awkward to kind of answer that question. You know, it's, we're still doing what we've been doing since March. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm going to homeschool my kids this coming year. So I am completely crazy. (laughs) Yeah. I just, that was a hard decision to make. Um, I don't, I don't think to be honest, I don't think it was because two weeks into it, it's going to go to homeschooling anyway. A hundred percent. I mean, I feel like it was a hard decision to make because of the responsibility that I need to take on um Mm -hmm. and making sure that i i do it in an adequate way you know like believing in myself that i can take on this responsibility but as far as whether or not they were going to school that was like fuck no (laughs) like that's not happening (laughs) absolutely not yeah chicago was initially two week two days and three days home Mm-hmm. And we we're gonna kind of, we we're still gonna stay home anyway. And then last week they're like, never mind, we're all remote. Mm-hmm. So. That's how it's been here. They can't, they just can't all get on the same page. Like the teachers had to submit a plan, so they submitted the plan, and right before the plan was supposed to be done, the governor's now like, oh well, everybody's gonna have to test, and if you want testing, the school's responsible for it. And everybody's in the school's like, yo, wait a minute. (laughs) You didn't say this when we made our plan. So it's Mm -hmm. back to the beginning. And it's just now the school district where we are have have been talking about what happens if somebody gets sick in the school and like the whole protocol that they have to follow. And it's just like it it just doesn't make me feel good. (laughs) Just you know, it just doesn't feel like people can easily lie and then they're not going to investigate the situation further. And it's like, well, yep. anybody can say the, the right things to the questions. So it's like, I don't know, just doesn't feel good. Mm-hmm. Uh, this whole, I mean, we, I was talking to um, Bobby Haight, um, our tour manager last week. And it's like, okay, what else? Let's see here. We got a pandemic. Okay. We're going to go, we got unemployed. Let's put some some civil unrest on top of that. Maybe we'll defund the police, and then um, bring on the murder hornets. You know what else can go wrong? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, it's just it's almost like you have to be able to. I mean, it's not funny, but just like it's laughable at how it's just all. Yeah, hit. it's just the shit has hit the fan big time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's certainly how it feels. So what have you been doing to keep yourself 
sane <laughs> with the kids and at home. And I mean, this is a complete different lifestyle for you. So, I mean, what yeah. is, what's that been like? You know, the first, right when, so we flew out to LA and basically I was getting on the plane. I, I in my mind, I was like, but why am I even getting on this plane? I'm going to turn around as soon as I get home. And I literally landed, turned my phone on. It was like, you're going home. I was like, all right, cool. I've been on the road for 20 years. Sweet. Let me go home. And so the first weekend, it was like, okay, like, we're going to have a couple weeks. You know, no one knew it was going to be like, here we are in August, right? Mm -hmm. So in my mind, it was like, okay, maybe we'll be off till summer camp. I'm going to take advantage of being dad. I'm going to be home. And then three days after getting home, it was like, oh, shit, this is terrible. This is bad. And then um, Brown, Mark Brownstein gave me a call about uh, the live lesson platform he was launching. He's like, do you want to be a part of it? And I was like, absolutely. When do we start? Tomorrow. I was like, okay. So I opened up 15 slots for lessons, and they all filled up in like 48 hours. So basically, since that first week, I've been teaching and then doing streams. Annie talked me into doing one that first March, whatever it was. And then she was like, do another one. And then it kind of snowballed into this thing that I've been doing that now. So mm -hmm. between doing streaming and I did some other streams for some other festivals and lessons and homeschooling and writing, trying to write songs. We're trying to do a new album. So I don't have a spare I don't have time. And I, I've talked to some friends who are they're complaining about running out of shows on Netflix to watch. I'm like, how do you even have time to watch like 30 minutes of anything? That's so how I I've feel. Been, right? Yeah. Uh, I've just been, I've been really, I've been busy, you know, just, uh, so I haven't really had time to, to stop and, and really think about like the whole reality of the situation, because I guess it's a good thing being busy. Mm -hmm. um, and, and in my mind, I was like, I'm going to write 45 songs and maybe I've gotten like seven. <laughs> you know, <laughs> This is not nearly as many, but it's, it's something. Um, but it's, so it's been good. We've been busy. I mean, the one thing is that 20 something years of traveling, this is the longest I've ever been stationary since I was in college. So, I mean, the one thing I think I'm taking from this all is um, how lucky I am, A, to be still uh, staying afloat, because I know a lot of musicians are getting crushed, uh, but how good I had it. You know, being on the road, being on the road with friends, getting your own hotel room, <laughs> you know? yeah going out to dinner <laughs> yeah um so it, i think it made me it's made me really appreciate what Humphreys has become and i miss it in a way that i never thought i would hmm. and i it, i'm looking forward to when we get back it's gonna be like full on you know it'd be very different but it's definitely made me appreciate how good i had it you know so that that's one positive thing for sure. I, I think when we go back on the road, I'm not going to be complaining about having to be gone from my kids for five days. You know? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's how I feel. Because you know, being a mama three, like the only time I really got out to do anything was when we would go out of town for shows. Like we would save babysitters because we wanted to go to this run of shows or whatever. And now it's like we're not doing that. So there's no like outlet either and that's it's like so hard <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I i gotta i'm trying to keep uh, reminding myself that this is hopefully nothing like this is going to happen again in our lifetime and i i need to take advantage of being here you know and and being present with kids because the lifestyle that i have or had was just i'd be here for Monday morning and I leave Tuesday night and then be gone for five days and then 
to kind of check in and check out. So this is like the first time where I'm, I'm reading books in bed every night and, you know, but at the same time, like you, not to harp on kids being assholes, but man, it's hard. It is. Being a parent is like the ultimate mind fuck, I think, because you just love these creatures so much, but you just want to wring their neck. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I love you so much. Oh, but I want to kill you right now. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like Annie and I both, we start a lot of our conversations with our kids is, listen, I love you, but go. Mm -hmm. Or go to your room. Listen, I love you, but I'm yelling at you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, that's like my nine-year-old. She gets so pissed off at me. And I'm like, listen, I know that you're mad at me right now, but my job is to make sure you don't grow up and be an asshole. Like, that's mm -hmm. my job, okay? So I'm really sorry that you don't like what I'm telling you right now, but that's what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> yeah. And she hates that answer, but it's like, I don't know what to tell you. I'm your mom. That's what I'm supposed to do. You're supposed to not yeah. like me right now. <laughs> because I said so. Yeah. She's like, that's not an answer. I'm like, but it is, though. It's an answer. <laughs> it's the answer that you're getting right now. For sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. So what's it been like teaching? Were you, have you ever taught before? Uh, so basically I taught a few lessons in South Bend right when I was graduating and we were waiting for Miro to graduate. So I had to stick around South Bend for a year or two years. So I had a couple, like maybe three or four a week, maybe. And then when I moved to Chicago, it picked up a little bit. Um, but then when the band was like really heavy touring, like the first 2000-ish, 2001, 2002, we were hitting 160 shows a year. I just couldn't maintain, you know, I'd come home and be like, I can't do this right now. So it had been about 15 years, maybe, maybe longer since I'd given a lesson. So I, the very first one, I was terrified. I was like, I, I don't know if I can do this. And then I kind of slowly developed um, kind of like a checklist, you know, and I can kind of assess. The thing is, that every time the screen pops up, it's a new, it's like a new face and I don't know their level, you know, and there's been a couple that the kid was way better than I, I could ever be. And it, I'm trying to show him stuff. I'm like, try this arpeggio. He's like, you mean this? Yeah, that's what I meant. So there's been some of that where they're really good. And then there's been some very basic beginners where I'm just teaching them a chord. And then there's like in the middle, it's, it's all over the place. So the it's been an adjustment for sure. But then there's a few, you know, a few times a week where I'm explaining something and I figure out the right, musical example you know and i see the light bulb go off so there's been a few times where it's like i actually feel like i'm contributing to society because i actually made this person understand something for the first time that they haven't so that that's that's been surprisingly a, a rewarding yeah and, and now getting an email back from somebody like a week later like hey i've can't thank you enough because now I finally understand what a Phrygian mode is or something. You know? So that's been cool. Um, and one other offshoot of it is I'm, I'm practicing with these people. Like I'm showing them examples and playing. So I feel like my, my playing is right where it was, if not maybe even elevated a little more just from the amount of hours every week of playing. And it, it's not like just strumming. It's like focused, like here's some drills and stuff I used to do. So that's been good. Like, I feel like when, when we go back, I'll be ready. I'm not going to be like dusting rust off, you know? Yeah. That's awesome. What a very cool experience to like watch someone learn something like that. I mean, you get that when you're a parent, when you teach them something and they learn it for the first time, but you know, as a teacher in your personal life to have that experience is, neat yeah especially when it's something that is a music is kind of elusive and not 
it's not like I mean uh, technically it is now but um you, you it's it's uh when you can pull the veil off some of the mystery and actually somebody you can see it in their eyes like holy shit now I can now it makes sense it's like okay I I feel like I'm making progress in the world at least helping somebody more than just helping them pass the time for an hour you know right do you have a lot of people that come back for repeat lessons yeah it's been very interesting because there's been s several now where I'm like on the eighth or ninth time so now it's like these are people that one guy's in London that I've now done like six or seven with one guy is in uh Canada and there's another guy in Phoenix and it's so it's weird because now I have like built up these relationships with them where it's like I, I kind of know these people now you know yeah um and like I said earlier there's this one guy from Cincinnati he took four of them and he was he was like as good as Jake like could do everything that he could think of and I kept asking him, like, why do you keep coming back to me? Like, you're better than I am. And he's like, I like picking your brain and seeing how it works. You're, you're explaining things to me in a way that reading a book or looking it up online doesn't really translate to me. So, yeah, I, the repeats um, are cool because it's like I can actually, you can only explain so much in an hour. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. And then there, to see their progress has been kind of fulfilling because there's one or two p examples I can think of where what they're doing now compared to what they were doing in April is light years different. And oh. I mean, that's on them for putting in the time, you know, but right. I'm just telling them what to do with their time. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's cool. That's very cool. And what an awesome opportunity you know, that you guys have and everybody else that's on that live lesson masters, like that's such an awesome idea and a great way for everyone to, you know, keep making money and keep their craft. Like you said, you know, keeping you on point and everything too. You know, I'm sure it's the same for everybody. It's amazing that that Brown scene was right in there with that idea. <laughs> he was like, all right, let's do this. <laughs> that's yeah, amazing. Uh I think that it's one, it's, I don't know if it's this week, but it, he's expanding it to a new platform with an, it's going to be a new name. And it, I, I don't think it's going to be zoom anymore. It's all going to be contained. Um, I actually have a call with somebody after this. They want me to film some stuff for it. And I was kind of like, okay, <laughs> I don't know what I'm supposed to do. What do you want me to do yeah. here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, so yeah, it was uh, it was cool that I got the call because it was right when shit hit the fan. So I haven't really had time to to freak out yet. That's good though. It's it's mm -hmm. good to just kind of keep moving forward, keep mm -hmm. doing the next thing. So how are your feelings on just live music, the future of it? Like it's it's going to be totally different when we do get back to it. I mean, Umphrey's just announced the drive-in show today. And then mm -hmm. the, you know, the wrapped in the round thing. And so you guys are trying to do kind of the, the new Something ideas that, here, but. Yeah, but it's, right now we're kind of, our hands are tied, right? With just the limitations of what you're allowed to do. And uh, honestly, there's, there were a couple of things that came up earlier that we just didn't really feel safe about. Like, I, I'm not ready to be in a room with people and. Uh, God forbid something happens. Like Stasek and I were supposed to do something in uh, July, mm -hmm. and the Monday before, I just I called him and Vince and was just like, I don't know about you guys, but I got a bad feeling in my stomach about this. You know, I don't want to be responsible for bringing 300 people together. Like they still have to go to the bathroom. Like there's still going to be interaction. God forbid something happens. I don't want that on my conscience that somebody got sick and so it's been it's been weird because there's not really many opportunities and then like you're just asking coming back 
I was just talking to Annie about this um, yesterday. Just like, how are we supposed to treat backstage? You know, like, are we allowed to have my best friend in town come back or is my wife allowed to be there? And then it's, okay, can they go out in the crowd and watch and then come back? And it's the whole thing is going to be different. How do we travel? Are we allowed to be on a tour bus on top of each other? I, you know, there's so many questions and I think it's pretty much it's all about the vaccine. I keep singing that song, come on vaccine. Vaccine, we mean everything. So I think until that happens, I just don't see anything indoors being mm-hmm. being even responsible you know mm-hmm. so i could see if it, there's no vaccine maybe next spring we we start doing the pop-up outdoor driving kind of thing but i mean how would you feel walking into a thousand person room right now you know is it, yeah yeah it's just, it seems safe yeah that's exactly how i feel and that's the same uh, conversation my husband and I have had about you guys where in the winter January February you're playing small venues you know mm-hmm. that even if they were able to social distance which a lot of those venues can't and are in danger of not even being there but if you could you'd sell maybe half of the tickets because that's all you could sell. So it's like, right. how much is it going to be? You're, you guys aren't going to make any more money. It's just going to be cost of having to run the venue differently and clean more. And it's yeah. just, it's, I don't know. It's mind blowing. It really is. Well, yeah, our, our livelihood is centered around mass gatherings. Mm-hmm. So how do you do that? I think, um, I mean, we used to do meet and greets. It's like, I used to have a secret handshake with, I mean, I still do with every guy in the crew. So I, I'd walk into the venue, you know, before sound check and walk up to each crew guy and have our secret handshake. And I don't know how I'm supposed to do that now, like from a distance. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of things that like, how, how do we, how do we consider, how do you feel about going on the road for four days and driving to four different states and then coming home to your family and like are, am I going to be like transmitting things or the, it's just like when you start to really think about it and really look at it it's like holy shit like mm-hmm. so I, I, haven't, <laughs> I haven't really spent too much time thinking about it because it's there's so many variables everything keeps changing every day that for me it's like why I can't really worry about something that I can't control mm-hmm. so until until there's a, a way to do it I'm not a scientist I don't know how to to fix this so I, until that vaccine happens I just don't see it I don't see it and then when it does and we comes back like are people going to feel comfortable even going mm-hmm you know, yeah, that's going to uh, be a huge thing. I know even personally for myself, you know, I'll be honest, it's going to be hard for me mentally to be like in the room and cool with everybody and not like, <laughs> you know, eyeing people up and like, yeah, I don't know if I want to hug you, <laughs> you know, like it's, right, right. it is going to be a weird situation to be in. Yeah, and because in that environment, when people are partying, you start to forget about it. And after 15 minutes, they're kind of, you know, more on top of each other. And then an hour later, someone's passing a joint around. And it's just like, okay, what? Take a step back. <laughs> you know? mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I don't know. I, I wish that there was, uh, I, but then again, I, I think about polio and things like that used to be the end of everything and then there's a vaccine it's like okay everything's fine so hopefully that's the scenario Mm -hmm. and then when i saw that the uh when the disco biscuits played that uh the was it the phillies baseball stadium i was like is this going to be the future where it's like i finally get to play stadiums (laughs) but they're (laughs) mostly empty (laughs) i don't know i get to play wrigley one day but it's empty 
How do you think that's going to be when you're playing and doing the wrapped in the round thing to not be playing to an audience? What do you think that's going to feel like? Well, we did the thing at Jake's place uh, mm -hmm. in June, and it felt surprisingly um, invigorating, almost not like I had the adrenaline of being live and so that that part was there playing with my friends was there it was exciting and you could, you could see we all after 15 seconds of playing it was almost like oh right this is who we are this is what we're supposed this is what we do you know so it, it came back quickly um but then this in the round thing the thing about the the that the boondock things are I, after the first song finished it was silent and then it was i was like oh hmm was that good? Did we suck? <laughs> like I can't. I, I need the feedback to kind of figure out what to do. And then this in the round, the way we're going to set up is we're going to basically be setting up in a circle, facing each other. So that'll be cool because it's something we've never done. Hopefully the the camera. It's a big warehouse, so mm -hmm. it it should look unlike anything we've ever done. So that I'm kind of excited about. It's yeah. going to be interesting to to actually be able to see everybody and not have to turn around to see Chris or so. Um, and now we have those two drive-in shows, so it's it's going to be interesting because I was, I would assume the two streams and the two drive-in shows are all different set. So we're right. going to have to actually kind of okay. Remember that the line in Prowler that delivers it? We got to practice all this stuff again. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some of these guitar lessons, there's been a, a one or two where the kid was asking me to show him a song, and I haven't played it in five months. So I'm like, hold on, let me I gotta figure it out. <laughs> so there, that's going to be a challenge. Yeah. But be falling on our face and making mistakes. Is, so that's fine. It's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. But how great was it to have Jake at your house last week? Oh, man. I've been trying to get him up here for a while. Just, you know, we I went down to Boondock in June, and it's like, if you get up here, once you're here, you're going to, you know, you're going to see, like, this is a low-stress situation. Like, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't thinking, let's learn 50 new songs. Right. It was let's play some songs that we wrote together that we haven't played in six months that we should be able to do on paper in our sleep, you know? So it was, it was cool just to kind of get him up here and be like, let's not even worry too much. We didn't even talk about the set list or what song until that day. And so I, that was the coolest thing for me. Cause it was like, look, we can do this. Like we don't, have to stress out about it we can just get together and we know enough stuff oh. half of our adult lives mm -hmm. Oops, close up let you're me, good let me text <laughs> i'm going to text annie just to make sure that the kid the kids aren't jumping on uh, you got me yeah okay cool yeah. All right. Um, so yeah, it was really good to get him up here and just to see him. Yeah. You know, yeah. this is one of my best friends that we've been going to battle together for a very long time. Decades. <laughs> it felt good to just just to do it again. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And then afterwards, we sat around on my back porch and did more just carry like we just did Bob Seeger tunes on the back porch. <laughs> nice you know which which was cool to me to be like okay we're done doing it but let's still do it some more just for the fun part of it right to just have your fun with your friend and you know that connection that you you guys each needed you know because jake men mentioned that mm -hmm. in the in the stream too about how good it was to say it again uh there we go <laughs> ah, you, you back all right yeah <laughs> The internet We're doing me. it. <laughs> I know. It's insane, man. The whole world is having this problem. 
Absolutely. It's so funny because people uh, like the stream on Thursday night and there were moments where like the sound cut out, but you guys were still playing. And it's so funny to hear people like bitch about it. And it's like, everybody's having issues with their internet right now. Like, calm down. It's going to be okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I haven't watched back yet. Um, but I talked to one of my friends the next day and I was like, how was he? I was like, yeah, there was some some pauses and, and some glitches mm -hmm. and for a split second I was disappointed and deflated and then I, I, then I reminded myself that this is the world we live in and the entire world is doing this mm -hmm. so if that's the worst thing that happened I remember playing live shit would happen where like PA would go out or power would go down or freeze mm -hmm. up <laughs> yeah for sure be back yeah there we go. <laughs> yeah. It's just got to work itself out for a minute. <laughs> it is what it is. So you talked about why not for a minute. So let's go back to that since everybody loves it. We look forward to it every Friday night. So that's just sort of started out as a idea from Annie and morphed into what we see now, huh? Yeah. The first one was, come on, just go. I didn't want to do it. And she was like, just, you're drinking. Just, it's fun. Who cares? So it, it started as just a pass the time. Let's have some fun with it. And then she, the next week talked me into doing it again. And then I think it was the third one where she and I ended up going live on Instagram till like it was two in the morning or something. And she kept saying, do one more, do one more. And she just kept pouring wine in my glass. <laughs> I look up and I'm like, holy shit. I've been live for a couple hours. Uh, we were talking about why not is what we were talking about. Right, right. So it turned into, it was just like a fun thing. And then, then it was like the third week I was doing it and we were up super late and I was like, Annie, we gotta. We have kids, and it's two a.m. and we're hammered, and they're gonna be up very soon. She was like, "Just one more song." <laughs> <laughs> but she just kept like, she, I, I, it's become her happy place, and she's kind of embraced her her newfound celebrity. <laughs> she is. Uh, she um her. It's been interesting because there's been nights where it's like trying to get the kids down and. This is like, I'm so tired. I'm I'm done. Mm -hmm. And she's like, can we go down, can we go downstairs and have band practice? I'm like, okay. And we'll get, I have like a PA system and we'll pull up like a screen with karaoke and we're d down there doing songs like for fun. So it's been cool. Like it's been something she and I have actually bonded, bonded over and we never, ever sang before together, ever. Not even like ever. So it's it's become something that we actually now kind of have been doing together, and she loves it. And I, you know, I get feedback from people saying that they, that they they enjoy it and they they want me to keep doing it. And I, I, I for example, this weekend I, I'm I'm not going to do it because I want I'm getting sick of myself. <laughs> if I'm over it, I'm sure there are people out there that are over it, and I feel like everyone's doing streams and there's a stream fatigue, you know? And mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'll come back to it, but I think this week, just let it breathe, you know, like so, at some point, if, it, if I can, if I did every single Friday, it's like, okay, I get it. This guy likes wine. You know? <laughs> <laughs> For sure. It, it's, it's nice to take a little break, but we do, we all love it. It's, and Annie, I've told her before, she is like my spirit animal. Some Friday nights, <laughs> you know, being home all week with the kids and just dealing with all the shit. And you're just like, just let it go. Listen to the music. Have a good time. And remember mm -hmm. the joys in the world. <laughs> that's, you know, that's a big thing for her too. And I, she's been pushing me to do it. There's been definitely weeks where I didn't want to. And she was like people need something to, and then the, the one or two Fridays I haven't done it. I, m I remember sitting around the first time, like, like, so what do we do? It's Friday night. Like, I, what are we supposed to do? She's like, we can go live on Instagram. I'm like, no, there's gotta be something else. So 
it's been it's been cool it's been interesting because my neighbor tony who has played he's the guy that plays the broom and the harmonica but he and i went to grade school and high school together so it's been cool like he lives six houses down nice so it's been cool to kind of have that and he was at the holiday show too wasn't he yes yeah uh-huh. that's so and he's a really good artist he 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 drew this picture of Annie and I for us to frame and it's got Annie in the perfect. She's got like her eyes closed with the glasses on going like, <laughs> so, that's awesome. It's been interesting because a lot of the lessons I'm giving people start talking about why not and asking me about it. I'm like, I, I, I guess people are enjoying it. You know, if, if for the time being, what else is there, you know? So, right. Yeah. Yeah, we we enjoy it. We we like it. And it's good to see you and it's it's good to hear you sing and see you guys having a good time and it's a nice little forget about everything else for a little bit. I was going to work up the Dear Prudence on piano. And then I realized it's like I know it in my sleep and I could just play on guitar. It's just so much easier. <laughs> I'll take that days. too. It's okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> one of these days awesome that will be beautiful well since we're on the subject of the Beatles I have to ask you because I'm a huge Beatles fan so tell me how you were introduced to the Beatles I love to hear everybody's story of how they heard them the first time and what it was like for them um well my older brother was kind of probably the biggest musical influence I had growing up and he had the red album and the blue album the mm-hmm. best of and I he was I was probably in second grade maybe when he started kind of listening to him a lot and I remember I remember twist and shout and then that was my favorite song and then talking to him about it and he was like they, they didn't write that it's like what and then I started that's when I started reading songwriting credits and was like oh Okay, the, but they wrote everything else, you know. <laughs> so I was big into them in grade school, and I still am, like, to this day. Like, when Roman was born, I had a playlist of, it was Rocky Raccoon, Blackbird, Yellow Submarine. I even put I Am the Walrus on there because it was an animal. But they have songs about pigs. They have songs about, you know, Mother Nature. and so. It was the, the one of the only things I feel like I could listen to with my kids that, you know, obviously we, I wouldn't put on Helter Skelter or Revolution Number 9, but <laughs> um, I just, I, I, I think they're, they're still my favorite band. If I had to get stuck on an island and I could only listen to one band, it would be them. Mm-hmm. So, um. John Lennon, I think, is my favorite songwriter. And uh, it's Annie looking for her phone. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right back. I took okay. it. <laughs> right here. I had to turn all the Wi Fi, your Wi Fi was on, and, and the computer. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so. Yeah, that was, let me close the door. My kids will be in here in a second. <laughs> That's why we've um, set up a little studio in the in the basement for me. Otherwise, they'd be running all over. <laughs> yeah, you have to have a, a barrier. For sure. And they don't even respect that. Um, but yeah, so the Beatles have always been my favorite band. Since basically I've discovered bands. Um, and I feel like they created genres that, like, when you think about Strawberry Fields Forever, it was pop songs. And then they created a, basically a new style. And I, I, to this day, like, it was a point of pride for all of my children, before they could even speak, to be able to say Paul, John, George, and Ringo. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I was, I, I, my, my best was my middle kid, Jackson. I could put on the, the Abbey Road album. And he could barely speak, but he could say John song, 
George song or Paul song before the vocals kick in. And that's when nice. I was like, yes. <laughs> I'm doing something right. For sure. My youngest is like that. He uh, will turn it on and he can name the tune before like it goes into the lyrics and stuff. And I'm like, yes, this is so awesome. <laughs> my 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 middle kid his favorite song was i need you by it's george harrison it's a deep cut it's like yeah. a b-side i think it's on the help record but the fact that i was like that's your favorite song that is so cool like <laughs> no half the people don't even know what that song is don't even know it and my kid like knows this i have to ask you so in 2015 no, it would have been 20, yeah, 2015. Okay. And you guys were at the Ravinia show in Chicago. Do you remember that? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I totally met you for the show and introduced you to my son, who we named uh -huh. after you. Do you, do you remember that? Can you see this? I don't know if you could see this picture. I'll have to email it to you. But I don't know if you remember that yeah. meeting. Yeah. I always wanted to ask you if you actually remembered that day <laughs> i do uh you guys were if you're looking at the stage to the left i believe mm -hmm. i was trying to that was that was 2005 or no that's 2015 2015 yeah because yeah. he was born in january of 2015 and he was about six months old in that picture so it was like in august and it popped up in my memories the other day and i was like oh my god i have to ask him if he actually remembers this yeah email me that picture that was, uh, it was really hot that day, my memory of that day. That's why he was not wearing clothes because they had, we had done the VIP like picnic thing. And so we were eating fruit and all this stuff with him. And it was so hot that he just, we had to take his clothes off. It was so hot. And he was just like half naked meeting you. And <laughs> what was that like to like meet somebody who had named their kid after you? It's uh, it's weird because I, it sound it almost seems like it'd be something that I would want for my own self <laughs> glorification. Right. right. Um, it's very flattering, by hundred percent flattering. Um, and I it's it's it was a, a bit of a surprise. I've had I've heard about it happening, but I've never had it happen until then. It's like. Oh, okay. Well, now I got to not be an asshole forever. <laughs> <laughs> For the rest of my life, I have to do things right. <laughs> well, it's okay. No, Cause again, they're, you know, kids are assholes. So it's, you know, <laughs> it's funny to like yell at them sometimes. I'm like, Brenda, just stop it. <laughs> God damn it, Brendan. <laughs> For sure. Well, I wanted to ask you about these two. My husband found these baseball cards on yeah. eBay. And um, then I think Jam Base wrote an article about them. And between that and me posting about them, everybody's been buying them up and stuff. So how did this idea come about? I got approached from Vince. And was like, he's like, you're not going to believe this but they want you to be in the next edition of is it upper deck i think yeah i think it is yeah Which, it is yeah i, I was kind of like are they for real like they really all right and they basically were like yeah they'll they'll pay you you need to sign it was initially it was like 400 and then when they actually did it they sent me 750 of them and i was like cool can i keep i just can i keep one to give to my kids they're like no well, I don't have one. <laughs> um, so we can send can... you one. We have a bunch of extras. We'll send you one. You don't have to do that. I, I no, should we be. Will. Able... It's okay. <laughs> well, I would we think mind. that the the company would have set aside a, a few. So I should. I should. I'll ask Vince if he can't get me one. Then I'll 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 ask okay. you for yours. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's but very cool. Sign... I was signing when my kids were looking at and they want and they were trying to like get their hand. I was like, you can't touch them. Just, you can't. So I don't the, think they've even seen it. 
That's got to be so neat for you being a baseball fan. Did you collect baseball cards when you were a kid? Yeah. That's I cool. I, I have a big pile at my parents' house that I've, in my mind, I'm like, there's something in there worth money that I don't want to show my kids yet because they're just going to destroy it. Uh, of course. Of course they are. <laughs> that's That's been our thing. We've decided to upgrade our entertainment center um because we did a private jake show for my birthday and we had audio issues on our end and my husband's like enough we have to stream shows now we're gonna upgrade this whole thing and he's buying stuff and i'm like are you sure you really want to put all this in the living room with the kids running yeah. around <laughs> like mm-hmm. uh, i don't know <laughs> mounted on the wall 17 feet off the ground that's the thing you're putting like a giant gate around it or something so they can't get in there we'll figure something yeah out. yeah it's, it's like nothing sacred so no <laughs> so you mentioned there being new music what can you tell mm-hmm. us about that well we did uh when we went to Nashville and we recorded Suck City, which we put out in, I don't know when we put it out, right up January maybe, but we did that track and we did two others that are brand new that no one's heard. So those were finished and we were going to put out an EP and then we're like, well, if we can, if we're getting together in June for this boondock thing, if we can get a couple more done, we might have enough for an album so we have i think it's enough i mean nowadays if you get to 45 minutes like most people don't have attention spans anymore so technically we have enough for a new one we're gonna when we do this ecto thing in two weeks we're gonna hopefully record three more and i went into a studio yesterday and finish basically all my guitar stuff. So now I just have to put the vocals down. So it's- Hold on one second. All, yeah, yeah. What's up, Marley? Okay, well, don't worry about it. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. She's like, someone rang the doorbell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, it's all right. <laughs> it's probably Amazon. It's good. <laughs> Yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be okay. I think it's just an it's an excuse to talk to you. For sure, I can like because I have my headphones in because I could so I could barely hear her and I could just hear go, mom, mom, mom. (laughs) (laughs) Like, oh my god, guys, just stop. (laughs) I get it. That's all day here. I have to tell you. I need to tell you something. I have to tell you something. I need to tell you something. What? Roman pushed me. Push him back. Thank you. That's real riveting. <laughs> mm-hmm. like, thanks, guys. Yeah. So anyways, um, back to yeah, the music. Uh, Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. It's, I totally get it. This is my life. <laughs> All day. Mine All too. day. Um, so, yeah, we basically have a bunch of new stuff. That I mean, we might put Stuck City on it. I don't know if we need to, but um, it's new stuff. And it's all over the place, kind of like Humphreys is. Um, mm-hmm. There's one that I really, really am proud of. It doesn't, I can't even figure out what the genre is. It sounds unlike anything we've ever done. And then there's some, I don't know. I mean, I like it. There's obviously um, going to be people that, there's some stuff that's progressive and heavy. There's some stuff that's soft. And there's one song that's, straightforward four minutes right down the middle that I really like but I could see people that love heavy metal wouldn't like it mm-hmm. but then there's there's some stuff that's super heavy that I could see people that don't like heavy metal won't like it so it's basically like Humphreys you know it's like yeah. everything um but I, I don't know if we're gonna wait to play we have we have to finish it obviously um, but I don't know if it's something that we sit and wait until we're finally able to tour again to put out, but I, I feel like once it's done, we're going to want to just put it out, even if we can't play it. Right. Just to kind of keep the ball moving. Right. Well, and I yeah. think 
personally for me it's hard to decide if i like a studio song until i've heard you guys try it on live mm -hmm. you know like i you know there'd be songs where you're just like yeah i really do like that for sure but i think it's hard to actually dismiss it completely until because it takes on it's it, a whole other character when it's it's live so you're like well you can't really completely yeah. dismiss something until you hear what they do with it well part of the problem too is when if we're writing something brand new in the studio and then we record it by the time we haven't even tried it live so by the time we get to on stage it's like oh let's stretch this out a little bit and this could be a longer solo or we don't have to come in right away here and it it it, it benefits from from being road tested because you get to actually revise it and improve on it but in a, in a moment in the studio you're you're just trying to get it done mm -hmm. and then evaluations come later so I, I i agree with that sentiment i totally get it and i do think that there are some songs that shouldn't even play live just those are studio tracks they, they don't mm -hmm. and some of those you know joel for example will be like no we gotta play it i'm like all right i'm looking at the reactions on the faces <laughs> read the room joel read the room yeah <laughs> totally <laughs> he thinks everything is awesome well he he just likes that lego movie so much i guess yeah, yeah. <laughs> everything is awesome <laughs> that's joel's ringtone <laughs> it should be <laughs> so have you been doing the 100 day challenge with annie yeah, but it's I'm doing it differently where if it's 30 minutes of taking a walk or 30 minutes of reading books with Nola or 30 minutes of playing catch with Roman. I'm not it's not like I for me it's it's not the um the same thing every day. Mm -hmm. It's more of a mental thing where it's like okay, for the next 30 minutes I'm doing this purposefully regardless of what it is. Yeah. So yeah, it's not, it's not as disciplined for me, but I still do think it's important to kind of just acknowledge taking 30 minutes for anything, even if it's taking a nap. Sometimes taking a nap is huge, though, you know, like sometimes that's what you need to do, honestly. There's nothing yeah, wrong with it. Back in the days of touring, I would be able to climb into my bunk after sound check and take a nap undisturbed now it's like they smell blood in the water it's like oh i think he's resting let me go jump on his face for sure the, oh look they're sitting down and not doing anything i need a hundred snacks and all the attention oh, <laughs> snacks man always the snacks that's what i was just talking to my husband yesterday i'm like seriously guys how how many more snacks do you need you just ate it. Did you finish the snack I just gave you? Like, I, yeah, I just Annie, opened one. <laughs> Annie brings up the point a lot of, she's like, what do you do at school? You're not allowed to sit and snack all day. You have lunch and that's your time. So, like, you know, it's just like after day five of quarantine, it's just like, I don't care anymore. <laughs> here's, a, here's a box of whatever and just don't get it on the couch. Yep. So... <laughs> you're just at that point you're just like your well is so dry like i can't i just can't go ahead just don't There's burn the house down <laughs> box of goldfish yeah. and th then they're like then they're like i walk out and, and noel's filling a bowl of goldfish and pouring water in them just to play with them i'm like money doesn't grow on trees goldfish oh. don't grow on trees <laughs> But that's part of the deal. That's what we signed up for. Mm hmm Yeah. They're crazy, but I love them. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> that's why I think that's why I think God made them adorable. Absolutely. We look, we look past everything. Absolutely. Otherwise that would just be it. <laughs> mm hmm I sleep outside. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so I wanna ask you about uh the film score that you did for Canyonlands. Mm -hmm. What was it like to 
do something like that. You've never done anything like that before. So what was the experience like? And is it something you think you would do again in the future? Um, yeah, so initially he asked me to do it a few times and I kept saying no, because I just was intimidated by it. And I said, I, I just don't, I, the whole thing is a big commitment and I just don't think I have the time or the ability. And then he kept asking, I was like, all right, well, how about if I bring Jake on If Jake does it with me, is that cool? And he's like, yeah, no problem. Money's the same. <laughs> but, uh, so once I had Jake in, it, it instantly became something that I knew would be a, way easier. And then when it came time to actually start doing it, it was, became very complicated. It was very time consuming. And I was staring at a screen like, editing and trying to drag a guitar add a reverb and make it right when the axe hit the guy's neck like all this stuff so it became um almost maddening for a couple of weeks because it was there were deadlines that had to be met and i'm just like i don't know how to do this you know so i've i've, I've learned how to edit kind of which is now a skill that i think will you know now that i have it i'm i will I would happily do it again, especially now. When we were doing it, uh, it was September, it was October, we were touring. So Jake and I were coming home and having to work on it and then go back on the road. And we got it done, thank God. Our good friend Shane came on and he basically, like we gave him all this and he, he just like cleaned it up. You know, like, he's like, this is, you guys are doing this right. Here's how you need to do it. And he, he was actually working on a, a crime like not CSI, but that kind of thing. So he was like, this is perfectly in my wheelhouse, what I'm doing. So I was able to sit with him and go through literally frame by frame, second by second, minute by minute, what, you know, to be, to, should be done. And then it, we realized this was going to take forever. So Jake, you take these scenes, I'll take these scenes and then we'll bring it together. And the irony of the whole thing is right now in a pandemic, if this would have happened, the movie soundtrack would have happened in April, it would have been perfect timing. I have hours and hours to sit at a computer and work on music. Like, so it would it'd be nice if an offer like that came in now <laughs> instead of, it, I bet the next one will happen right when we're going to go back on the road, you know? So, yeah. but it's, it's cool to know that we can do it. Um, I think it came out, no pun intended, killer. Um, <laughs> I'm excited for people to see it and, and the feedback that he got, the director said that he showed it to a bunch of people in the industry and that they, they thought that we crushed it. So hopefully once it's out there, people, we can use that as like a resume thing. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, um, and the thing about the murder part is I don't really watch murder movies. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of literally watching a scene, rewinding it, pausing it, and just over and over. And just like, this guy, like, like, like an, a pickaxe to the neck and blood. And I was just, my kids would walk in like, what do you, I was, you can't, you know, <laughs> watch it. And so there was a lot of that where I'm staring at a screen watching literally 45 seconds for three hours, trying to line stuff up. So that part was kind of crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it was a very, very cool learning experience. And yeah, I'm, I'm totally open to do, I, I, I could go for a good rom-com next, you know, something a little more acoustic and delicate. <laughs> <laughs> a little less slashery. <laughs> oh man. I mean, there's some stuff where it's just, yeah, I mean, I don't think you've seen it. So it, there's some, there's a lot of like violence, but that's, that's what I heard. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. why I told my husband he's watching it and doing the review for me. I'm like, I'm not doing it. It's not my kind of movie. <laughs> Did he see it? No, but when we get the chance to see it, I'm going to have him watch it instead because okay. not my thing. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. There's no doubt that the soundtrack's good. I have total confidence in you guys. <laughs> <laughs> The movie's good too. It's just a murder movie. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, literally eight people go out into a canyon and 
one person comes out. Yeah. So. Not my kind of movie. <laughs> no. no. But what a cool experience for you, though, to be able to create something like that. Yeah, you know, and it's something that now it's done. I'm looking back at like I'm glad it happened. In the in the heat of it, it was just like it at one point was holy shit. Like, what did we sign up for? How are we going to finish this on time? And when it was the minute it was finally done, done, it was just like this huge weight. And I was like, now I can go back to actually writing songs that aren't about killing people. So. <laughs> So yeah, I'm I'm very glad it happened. It would be awesome to have right now, but you know, shit happens when it happens. So for sure. Well, since that soundtrack was mixed and put all together at Skywalker Sound, I think it's adequate that we talk about Star Wars for a second because <laughs> I'm a big Star Wars nerd. So I'm like, I have to ask Bayless about Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. So what is your favorite Star Wars movie? Empire Strikes Back. Right answer. Episode five. Yeah. <laughs> that would be it's the correct the answer. <laughs> it's the be- by far the best one. It is. Um, it's so I like how it's dark and how the bad guys win. Mm-hmm. You know, it's mm-hmm. just, it's just like what movie before that, other than like The Godfather, where like the hero actually gets his hand cut off and the other hero gets frozen in carbonite and. <laughs> yeah. They lose. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I cannot wait to watch that movie when we get our whole new entertainment center, like all set up. I cannot wait. That's probably my biggest memory of Star Wars when they re-released those movies before the the first three came out. And I remember going mm-hmm. to see Empire Strikes Back in the theater and just the sound of it was just mm-hmm amazing like i'll never forget that i thought it was so cool so as soon as we decided to do that i'm like yes <laughs> yeah it was um it's been one of the my goals of the quarantine was to watch all nine with my kids we we didn't do three because it's just so violent you know? yeah yeah but um there are they all got way into it and then it became like i had to start buying lightsabers and like, be careful what you wish for. <laughs> it took a different turn than you were expecting. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, they, I needed them to see that because I grew up on that. And every day that I was sick from kindergarten to high school, I would watch the VHSs. So, I mean, I could, you could name a, a scene in uh, episode four and I could tell you the dialogue. You know, like I, I remember weird space stats like, the Millennium Falcon was parked at Docking Bay 94 mm-hmm. and her, her cell block was 1138 like I know this stuff is just burned into my brain mm-hmm. that's awesome though <laughs> it's important that the next generation watches those movies though and knows like the original story before all the stuff that's branching off now and what they are expanding with the universe and everything I think it's important that they know like the original like yeah the good source one. <laughs> for sure so obviously since you love star wars so much but was there another reason why you named your band tashi station no uh we just didn't have a name and i was like i'm going to tashi Sta- i'm going to waste time with my friends that in my mind it was like a play on a reference of we're just friends wasting time but wade Wilby actually just sent me for my birthday a mug a tashi station coffee mug which is my new favorite mug. That's cool. Yeah, That's no cool. reason other than I I thought that unless people were into Star Wars, they would they wouldn't know what it was. So it's kind of like mm-hmm. a, my nerd thing coming out. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Look forward to that day when I get to see your face in person again. Hundred percent. Me too. <laughs> Me too. I I can't wait to just try whatever normal is. I I'll take whatever I can get. I'm going to be a mess just crying the whole like first, probably the first set is just going to be tears of just being all together and getting through all of this because I feel like finally being able to see you guys play music on the stage again is kind of going to symbolically be the end of what we're dealing with right now. 
you know, we'll be in a place in our lives that we just can't even kind of fathom on the other side of this. You know, and it kind of signifies like, yes, we got through it, <laughs> you know, sort of a thing is kind of how I feel that first show is going to be. Oh, yeah. You'll you'll see some grown men weeping for sure. Yeah. yeah. I'll be one of them. <laughs> and there will be no shame in it because we all miss it. And that's what I'm so excited about. The whole wrapped in the round thing is like, it's a legit I'm free show. And it's I think it's what we all need. 100%. Yeah, it's going to be great because like Chris Mitchell will be there mixing. Ben Factor is going to be running the lights. It's going to be like, oh, we're getting the band back together. Yeah. Can't wait for it. I'm excited. Me too. I'm ready. I bet. I bet. <laughs> My kids aren't coming. My kids will not be there. <laughs> I don't blame you one bit. <laughs> not for them. No, it's not their time. They can come another time. <laughs> yeah, two years from now. <laughs> That's how I feel. We've always taken our kids to a bunch of shows, but it's like, no, once we go back, it's, no, it's my, it's my time. It's, it's like Goonies. It's like, this is their time. This is our time here. A hundred percent. All right. Well, this was absolutely wonderful. Thank you for your time. No, I appreciate it. I, I hope uh, I answered things sufficiently. Yeah, you did great. I was like, you mentioned it during the sound check the other night, and I was like, oh, no pressure. Got to come with the good questions. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to get in your head a little bit. Yeah, it worked. It worked. My husband looks over at me. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> nice. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> Well, I hope the questions were adequate. So that's fantastic. Yeah, um, <laughs> I I didn't really. Yeah, I mean, I could. I have another meeting in a few minutes, but and we'll do it again sometime. I would love that. That would be awesome. Cool. Well, thank you. All right. Well, this is great. Yeah. All right. Well, have a great thank rest you of your day. Much. Yeah. You thank too. You. Try not to kill your kids. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah, Take care. Thank you. See you out there. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. So that's everything I have for this week's episode of the show. Thank you again to Bayless for taking the time to be on. It was such a pleasure to have you as a guest and shoot the shit about a bunch of stuff. Can't wait to do it again and can't wait for the day we're all together again raging. There's a bunch of links in the show notes for anything that I referenced throughout this entire episode where you can book your own conversation on the show, past episodes, the Etsy store, all sorts of stuff. So make sure that you check all of that out. Thank you all for joining me. I'll see you around these parts next week. Mad love. <laughs>